What up, what up, what up, folks? What's going on? Welcome to episode 62 of the Spun Today podcast. I'm your host, Tony Ortiz. Thank you very much for listening. In this episode, I speak about reading The Alchemist again, um, or listening to the audiobook. Like I mentioned in the last episode, I told you guys a bit about it and that I would want to, I definitely wanted to listen to it again. I think literally the very next day I started listening to it and knocked it out in, in that same day. It was like, a, I think it's like four and a half hours in the audiobook. Um, and I got uh, just a few more points that I want to mention uh, to you guys. Also in this episode, I speak about two stand-up comedy specials, a new one. Uh, that recently came out, which is Joey Coco Diaz's Socially Unacceptable, and an oldie, Richard Pryor's Live in Concert. I also speak about The Ultimate Fighter, a Tournament of Champions finale, UFC 206, and I also read and reflect on some free writing, which is located at spuntoday.com forward slash free writing. So if any of that stuff sounds like something that you would be into, stick around and enjoy, and if not, check out the back catalog of the other 61 episodes of the Sponsor Day podcast, which are available at your fingertips for free. Alrighty, so, The Alchemist by Paulo Cuello. And there'll be links in the episode notes uh, to the book if you guys want to, you know, order a physical copy or the audiobook or whatever. I'll link to it, make it easy for you in the uh, episode notes slash descriptions. All right, so what else is, along with uh, what I mentioned last in the last episode, what else is The Alchemist about? And some of these things might be redundant, but these are just some things that I jotted down when I was listening to it the uh, second time around. It's about finding your personal legend and pursuing it. Now, personal legend is described in the book as, or at least what I got from it, my interpretation as following your dreams or like what you were meant to do, following your personal legend. It's also about the way and knowing it broadly in the sense of, I I borrowed that term from a book that I haven't read yet that's on my to-read list, um, The Book of Five Rings by Miyamoto Musashi, which I've heard spoken about in podcasts that I listen to and uh, referenced a lot. And um, it's by a Japanese samurai warrior guy from back in the day that was a philosopher as well. And a main um, theme of that book, as I heard secondhand, is if you know, or a quote from it, if you know the way broadly, you can see it in all things. And this book, The Alchemist by Paulo Cuello, I think speaks to that as well. And it's kind of like, like the way is like uh, the, the Tao Te Ching or the, the, what's the best way to explain it kind of like like real recognizes real or like achieving perfect being it not perfection because you can't achieve perfection right but aiming towards perfection and sharpening your craft etc allows you to reach a certain level of understanding and mastery and once you do achieve that level you're able to internalize it and then see that level of mastery and other things which are unrelated to your type of mastery so if you're you know the illest basketball player you can you can see that illness in a baseball player even though you don't play baseball or a writer being able to see something in and see that level of mastery if you will in an actor or in a movie or in a song or in a pilot, or, you know, anything. If you know the way broadly, you can see it in all things. Um, the The book speaks to that in how it references the language of life, or the language of the universe. And I thought that was pretty, pretty cool concept. What else did I jot down here? Uh, different people have different paths, even if they have the same destination. So that's something that stood out to me as well and is, I guess, um, relevant when you think of it in terms of, if you want to think of it in terms of politics, you know, here in America, at least, you know, Democrats, Republicans, it's like, generally speaking, most of them are, you know, evil pieces of shit, but (laughs) 
generally speaking, you know, there has to be some good ones in there. And the good ones don't, on either side, don't, um, don't necessarily have the same, they have the same goal in terms of, you know, prosperity for the country and a sense of national pride and, and, you know, want the best for America, quote unquote, but they have different methodologies and different approaches and different ways to get at that goal. So the book kind of sort of speaks to that in the different characters that, that are introduced like throughout the way. Something else that it's, that stood out to me, or at least that I interpreted from it is appreciating the good in spite or because of the bad. For example, there's um, a scene in the book, which actually my free writing piece later today, I just realized like kind of ties into that statement that I just said there about it, like appreciation and shit like that. So stick around for that. But there's a scene in the book where the kid in it is contemplating the shepherd. He's contemplating um, why the desert exists because they, they take, you know, spoiler alert, they take like a long journey um and he's passing like through the through the desert for like days like horse and carriage type of shit and they get to a little village and it's like full of greenery and there's like 50,000 trees and and it's like the beautifulest thing that any of the the people that were there um there's like a little waterfall and lake and like stuff like that the people that were on the journey that were just seeing desert and desert and desert um for a large span of the trip it was the most awesome thing that they've seen right um but the kid contemplates it as maybe god created the desert so that we can appreciate the trees so it's kind of like appreciation like that not just appreciating the trees for the trees but appreciating the desert for allowing you to be able to appreciate the trees you know what i mean um so i got that from it and there's definitely like religious undertones uh to it like they speak of, of you know, stuff like that, like God creating the, the desert so that we could appreciate the trees or um, omens they speak of. And people like the king, uh, there's a king that he passes by that helps him out, helps him out. And the king tells him something to the effect of, of the kid asks him, you know, do you always help people like this? And, and the king says something like, uh, something to the effect of I help people, I appear when necessary, but in different forms, and I help people even when they don't know that I'm helping them type of shit. So it does have, like, religious undertones to it, but to that, like, I'm not, I'm not a religious guy, but you can substitute whatever your, your belief system is, you know what I mean? Whether it's science even, or plug-in the universe or plug in the way or plug in belief or plug in you know faith or plug in spirituality or plug in fill in the blank you know whatever you're into and it still gets the same same type of point across and that's pretty much it like i said there's going to be uh links in the episode notes if you guys want to check out the book i recommend it paulo cuello is the writer and it is the alchemist very famous best-selling best-selling book there and here at the end of the notes i wrote down something else which i completely forgot about but it's in reference to the last episode again i feel like i should have just done like a podcast extra for that episode but i just wrote in regards to remember how i was speaking about the editing that uh podcast that i'm listening to about editing editing your book with that uh sean coin the um the editor um something i jotted down from listening to that podcast which isn't like a quote from it but just a a thought that i had from listening to it and like why i'm like drawn to it because mostly you hear like writers say like they don't they don't like the editing process or they're like apprehensive towards it like in terms of you know giving their work to someone else and getting you know getting feedback and like stuff like that and i completely get that because i'm that way as well um but, you know, it's like a necessary evil, if you will. But it's a good thing. It's not an evil thing. And But, you know, writers are mainly, not all, obviously. Everybody's not the same. But writers are mainly, you know, like the creative types in that sense. And not, and they don't like the, the other side of it, 
which uh, is where the editor comes in, which is more analytical. They break your stories down and your books down into digestible pieces and place them up against the the certain conventions of stories that are, are necessary for st- certain storytelling. And I'm, you know, I'm no fucking editor, but I'm learning this stuff as I'm listening to the, the Story Group podcast and a few other interviews that I've heard of other writers, of uh, other editors as well. And, but that fascinates me also. So it's like two sides, you know, the right brain and the left brain, like the analytical side and then the creative side. And I just jotted down that the deliberate, uh, Editing is the scientific aspect of writing and the deliberate methodical work. Creativity and letting it flow is the art. Combining the two is the harm is the harmonizing of the two. And doing this masterfully is my goal. AKA I'm also broke and not, you know, can't uh can't uh pay an editor <laughs> right now to edit it for me. But I kinda like the fact that I'm gonna do it all myself you know what i mean like with that first like novelette or uh, not novelette uh, novella that i mentioned to you guys but yeah anyway that's that what's next two stand-up comedy specials that i saw so joey diaz has his comedy special out it's called socially unacceptable if you guys listen to this podcast you probably have heard of uh me mention him in the past or maybe you are fans of joey coco diaz i definitely am um, he is also the host of a, of a podcast called the church of what's happening now, which is dope. Uh, definitely a fun listen. And if you guys are into that podcast, you'll definitely be into his, uh, comedy special. Joey's a 25 year comic. He's done a few comedy CDs. Um, he's also an actor, but this is his first, um, standup special like that you could see like visual special, um, outside of a CD. So that it was pretty cool because I've been following his career for for a while since I've been into like podcasts and stuff like that. And I found all these guys like Rogan and Ari Shafir and Duncan Trussell and Bill Burr. And when I started like getting getting into comedy more so, um, and it's pretty cool just to see him see him achieve that. And he's 52, 53, I want to say 51 around there. And he's been doing comedy for 25 years. And and this is um his first special and it was it was classic joey diaz you know what i mean like if you listen to the podcast it's like more of that like it's not you're not gonna get something different or something you know polished and it's ex- exactly what you want from um joey diaz and um it was dope it was a good time i i recommend it to you guys you can check it out and he's the furthest thing away by the way from a clean comic so if you like like dirty, raunchy, crazy, sick shit, talking about snorting blow from a hooker's asshole and shit like that, then <laughs> definitely check it out. Um, Joey Coco Diaz, it's available on this new app and and um, like online for um, I don't know site, I guess you can call it called CISO, S E E S O. It's actually a a company that NBC started, like a side uh, thing, to, like just for comedy, um, which is pretty cool. It's it's like a like a Netflix type of thing, you know, like an online streaming service type of thing, um, but just for comedy. And it is, I believe, like three ninety nine, three dollars ninety nine cents a month. Um, but you can sign up for it, and if you use promo code Joey J O E Y, you wind up getting two months for free. Uh, which is exactly what I did, and then after the fact, uh, I'm gonna cancel it because I just wanted it for um to check out Joey Diaz's special, and there's a couple other ones on there as well. Um, I'm gonna check out Doug Stanhope's is on there, which I want to check out uh, before they cancel it, before I cancel it, and um, uh, there's a bunch of uh you know like comedy shows and and just stand up clips and like stuff like that. It's pretty dope. Um, but you know I get you know, comedy specials like on Netflix and I don't know, just not going to keep the service, but definitely wanted to check it out to support. And I think Brian Callens is going to be, I think CISO bought Brian Callens latest special, like the rights to his special. And they, uh, they uh, got it on there. So I got to check that out as well. But yeah, Joey's fucking hilarious. I saw him live, uh, here in New York and 
it was, it was just an awesome time. I went with my brother and and my boy Raul, and we um I one of the most memorable things from that night was I felt I don't I don't know for sure, but I felt like there was these two like I don't know white dudes. Uh, I was gonna say gay white dudes, but I don't know if they were gay. They just look kind of fruity. <laughs> but um, they were sitting like in a table in front of us, and Joey Diaz just says like off the cuff random like stuff. And I know he he's like a writing comic. Like he sits down and writes, so it's not like necessary. It's not all off the cuff. Like I know his process. Um, but when he's like in the flow of shit, um, he just like spews random shit. Like if you listen to the podcast, like podcasts are obviously like not scripted. Um, like you get that from him. You you have an understanding of that. And I just remember in in one um like bit that he was doing, he winds up saying, "And this bitch tasted like." fucking chloroform he says something something to the effect where he injected the word chloroform which had nothing to do with <laughs> with nothing and osmosis and then i just remember like one one of the white dudes turns to the other one and say did he just say fucking chloroform but he was like howling laughing and it was just it's like that type of experience like to listen to, uh to joy diaz and uh this uh stand-up special was more of that so definitely check it out i recommend it CISO, S-E-E-S-O dot com. And you do have to put in like your credit card and like shit like that. Put promo code Joey. And then you get two months for free. You can watch everything you want on there. And uh, then just cancel the shit afterwards if you don't want it. Or keep it. Next is Richard Pryor's comedy special. Live in concert. Oh, you know what? Before before that, something else that just came to mind regarding the um, the whole editing thing. Something that's cool that I find myself doing now is that I'm able to, since I'm like learning the tools the editors use to to give feedback on uh, on books and you know like screenplays and and movies or whatever, I'm able to. I know I catch myself like spotting certain things, like oh, that's the inciting incident in act one that gets paid off in the climax of the final scene of the movie and like stuff like that. Like I'm able to see those, those tools, those mechanisms like at play, which should translate into better writing by me on my part, which I guess time will tell, but, and you guys will be the ultimate deciders of, but anyway, that just came to mind. So, back to what I was saying. Richard Pryor. So, so Richard Pryor is uh, widely regarded as one of the all-time greatest stand-up comics. You know, he's up there with Carlin. Um, he's always on everybody's, like, top three, top five um, uh, stand-up comics. He was obviously uh, before my time. Not obviously, but he was before my time. And... I've I saw one of his specials before a long time ago. I think it was uh, live at the Sunset Strip, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I, I you know I thought he was funny, but I saw this um I saw this one recently, a few days ago, which it's on. I don't know if it was on the, that CISO app or if it was on or if it's on Netflix, but it's uh. It's called, or is it Richard Pryor Comedy Special Live in Concert? And it's from 1979, if I'm not mistaken. And I think I saw the genius of of Pryor in this special. I think the other one, the Live at the Sunset Strip, I think it's like supposed to be his like best shit. Um, but I guess I have to like rewatch it now. When I'm like more into it, but um, this last one, I think I saw like the genius of like, or, or just something dope that he was able to do that I noticed, which is every single character that he that he mentioned, like in all of his bits, he became like he he like really internalize them really really kind of like a uh 
like when I'm writing characters, like I have to like get into that character set and like what would he or she say, you know, given their past and you know their mannerisms and their their proclivities or whatever. Like he seamlessly flowed through the different characters that he would bring up and not just like people characters like he he would you know act as a white guy act as a black guy act as um different people in the bits that that he would do you know little from a little kid to an older kid but then he would do it he would become like a dog like he would say a bit about a dog and he would like respond as the dog to the adult um or to the the owner or whatever or, or a dog speaking to another dog a dog speaking to a horse um, a bit about like a deer and being in the woods and like er- like being the deer and then he spoke as the deer and like you you at least what I got from it like you really like you feel him as that you know what I mean like he really like him you see him mentally or like get himself into like that mind state like I'm a dog now and really speaks from that character and I don't know I just thought that was like that was like really dope and I kept noticing him doing that with every single every single bit every single scene um within that that special and he was able to do it seamlessly and I think that's that's genius to me whether that's why he's regarded as one of the the best comics ever uh I would I don't know um but that to me was really dope and just the fact that it was funny as fuck anyway the ultimate fighter so the ultimate fighter the the season finale of the the tough show that i told you guys about that that i started watching again um was was pretty ill um it was cool well first off it was cool to see i didn't see the fight for um brandon moreno and ryan benoit but Brandon Moreno was, he was like one of the first ones in the show, in the show tough. He didn't win the show at all, but he was like the final seed, complete underdog out of all the people that were there in the house. Um, he was thought to be like the worst, you know, uh, of those, like the final seed. And he was going up against one of the guys that was like the number one or number two seed or something like that. It was like a, a bracket tournament uh, type of thing. And Brandon just brought it to him and, like, surprisingly, like, true underdog style, and, like, brought it to him and, like, almost won and just fought his, his balls off. And and it was awesome. And he he's, like, this Mexican dude and he's, he's young and married, has a little kid and just seemed like, like everybody liked him in the house. Like, he was fun and, like, cool with everybody and nice. And he wasn't, like, a, that douchey like a douchebag or whatever. And um it was cool to see that they gave him they gave him a shot to fight like in the undercard in the UFC and he won. He won a a decision a victory against this guy. I didn't see the fight but then when I saw the highlights and I saw that like uh, I was happy for him. That was pretty cool. Then uh the coaches uh Benavides and and Cejudo. Cejudo was pissed. He was tight. He was fighting with mad passion. He, he looked good. He looked good fighting. Um, but he lost to Benavides in a split decision, I believe, um, to Benavides. But it was a good fight. It was a back and forth. At first, I thought um, um, Cejudo would, was going to like knock him out or something. I think he knocked down uh, Joseph Benavides. And it was... It was it was cool to see, you know, there was like a lot of tension and and bad blood between them while they were coaching. And um, uh, Henry Soto brought it definitely though. Uh, and then the main event was sick. So Mighty Mouse Demetrius Johnson, he's you know they formulated this whole show to get all the champions from around the world uh, within that weight class to see if somebody could give him comp. Cause in the UFC, he's literally wiped out the entire division. The two coaches that were coaching the guys, um, in the tough show, he beat one of them twice already. And the other one once in like spectacular fashion across the board. 
and the guy that wound up winning the show, uh, this guy, Tim Elliott, he used to be in the UFC. Then he lost like three fights in a row and then he got cut because that's what happens when you lose three fights in a row in the UFC. And he's on that one. So it was like, you know, going to be like a like a slaughter. Like he's supposed to get outclassed, um, which technically he did. But in the first round, the first round definitely, I think, would go to Tim Elliott. Like he, he said he was going to fight. Because Mighty Mouse Johnson, the champion, he's, like, known to be a technician. Uh, very, very technical. Very precise. And they said that, like, everybody that fights against him tries to, like, out-technique him. But it's, like, impossible because he's, like, just outclasses everybody in that sense. Uh, but Tim Elliott, he was, like, I'm just going to be sloppy and, and, like, dirty. And, and, and um, not dirty, like, kick him in the balls, but, you know, just, like, unorthodox and wild and and try to beat him that way man it fucking worked for him he mighty mouse was in a shit ton of trouble in the first the first um the first round he got knocked down for the first time that i ever saw but even though he popped like right back up he also uh tim Elliott caught him like in a deep deep uh guillotine he had him like in a choke and he had it in deep, like, to the point that everybody was like, oh, my God, Mighty Mouse is going to lose. He's going to tap. But that's when he, his, like, uh, championship, like, mindset, like, took over and, like, set in. Like, he was where anybody else would have gotten, like, frantic. And you see fighters, you know, tap out and or, and or get choked. In that type of circumstance, he remained completely composed. He's, uh, you know, like stood still instead of like trying to shake shake himself out of it and get it and you know wind up getting himself into a worse position he like stayed still gave the thumbs up to the to the ref to ward off the ref from like calling it off or thinking that he fell asleep or something like that and very very slowly like i think it took him like a minute or something to like of like trying to slowly like pull his head out without getting like choked even more and just like completely composed, um, got himself out of out of trouble that way, and then the rest of the fight, Mighty Mouse pretty much dominated, but with uh, with wrestling, and Tim Elliott just kept like trying submissions, and he Tim Elliott like had him in trouble. Mighty Mouse just kept like taking him down, uh, but Tim Elliott would like reverse the takedown, and it was like back and forth, back and forth, but um, Mighty Mouse like dominated, like he was on top of him uh, for the majority, like. 20 minutes out of the 25 minutes or whatever some something like that it was the stat he had uh, like top control and he retained his title but it was definitely like he was supposed to get like demolished by mighty mouse and that wasn't the case and it was the first time we saw demetrius like in actual trouble so it was a uh, it was a dope matchup to see now ufc 206 which took place in toronto Somewhere in Canada, I think Toronto. Yeah, Toronto. Ontario, Toronto. Um, Tim Kennedy, I was rooting for, got his ass whooped by Kelvin Gastelum, which looked awesome at 185. For those of you that don't know, he normally fights at 170, uh, Kevin Gastelum and Kelvin Gastelum. And he missed weight like a few times already, I think like twice by like margins of like 10 pounds or some shit like that. And just like super unprofessional, like the UFC got pissed off at him and told him that if he wants to fight, it has to be at 185. And he took it. He took the fight at 185. I was rooting for Tim Kennedy um, and Gastelum just like whooped his ass, demolished him and looked really good at 185. Um, to the point that people were saying, why don't you just fucking fight at 185? And um, he's like upset with himself and saying that, you know, he just likes his mexican food way too much and he's not as disciplined as he should be but that for his height and reach he should be making 170 um and whatever that's on him but he l did look really good at 185 and but yeah, he said aside from tim kennedy like everybody else is like six feet tall he's not you know they have like a substantial reach advantage on him so it wouldn't make sense to him f to continue to try to compete at 185 then you had swanson and Choi. i hadn't heard one of my boys told me about the uh Choi guy 
but I hadn't heard of him before this fight. And he was fighting Cub Swanson. And this was a... It's being like touted as a fight of the year. And I would definitely put it up there as one of the best fights I've seen. It's definitely one of the best fights I've seen this year. I don't know if it's the best, but it's definitely one of the best fights that I've seen this year. Just like a straight slugfest back and forth. Um, Cub Swanson was like punching this dude left and it was like this guy was like a zombie um they call him the um the korean Superboy, and he looks like he's fucking nine, 19 years old or some shit um young kid up and comer i started to get hype behind him in, in the ufc and then uh facing this vet swanson cup swanson um that was just knocking his fucking head off and then uh duho 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 Choi would just like give it back to him and then almost knock Cub out and it was like back and forth and back and forth and it was sick to, sick to see like you you were watching a knockout in the making like every fucking round like back and forth for each one it was a dope fight and but uh, Cub Swanson won and uh, definitely definitely a contender for fight of the year had to be fight of the night at the very least um, I think it was. I think they got that, like, the fight bonus for that. Then you had, uh, Cerrone and Matt Brown, which was a dope fight. Cerrone continues to look dope. Um, when he moved up to, I think that's 170, if I'm not mistaken. Where Cerrone moved up to. And in weight, and he's on a four-fight win streak, if I'm not mistaken. And he knocked out. Um, Matt Brown in the third third round, and that was sick. It was like with a with a left kick to the fucking head. Um, and that was cool. Then Holloway and Pettis. I don't know what it is about Pettis. Like I like his, I like the Showtime flashy aspect of him, but ever since he he like lost his belt, and even when he had it. I know it's I'm gonna sound like a fucking hater, but something about him seemed off. Like I didn't I didn't like have that confidence in him, like when he fought. And I don't know. Max Holloway was is just like a brawler. He's um he was one of the guys in that fight that I that I've told you guys about that he just like at the end, you know, he was ahead in the cards, but he just loves fighting and brawling so much that he told the dude he was fighting. I think it was it was Longo or so, something with an L. Um, they just like pointed to the ground, like let's stand our ground and just like swing it out for the last ten seconds, and that's what they did. Um, and these guys are, you know, it's not like a street fight or something like that. Any these guys connect, and it's lights out for the other one. So it's like the last ten seconds to like put your chin out there like that, just just like for the sake of fighting is like sick. Especially when this is your career and you're already clearly winning um, the fight. Uh, but yeah, Max Holloway won. He's the interim champ now in that division, which doesn't fucking make sense to me. The whole now there's two belts in that division because Conor McGregor they took they stripped his belt away, the 145 belt because he can't have two belts at the same time, and he has the 155 belt. He had to vacate the 145, so they gave the 145 back to Jose Aldo, the guy that Conor beat for it. In that 13 second knockout, but then they let the number one guy and the number two guy fight for an interim belt at the same time. Anyway, um, it's just to hype up the unification of that belt. Now, Max Holloway versus Jose Aldo, which might happen in Brooklyn um, in February at the Barclay Center, which would be cool. But, um, but yeah, uh, Max Holloway's a beast. He's, I think he's like on a 10 fight win streak or some sick shit like that. He's just a fucking like a brawler. Um, and I'm not surprised that he won. And Anthony Pettis lost, uh, missed weight by three or four pounds. Um, so he wasn't even eligible. Like if he would have won, he wouldn't have won the interim belt. Like he, that was like his punishment or some shit. And um, it was the first time that he got stopped. He got knocked out in the third round. Um, in the beginning of the third day. The ref stopped at TKO victory. So, yeah, that was UFC 206, and I enjoyed it. 
All right, so let's check out this free writing piece so we can wrap this bitch up and move on with our lives. Alrighty, so if you guys want, you know the drill. If you want to follow along with any of the uh, free writing episodes, I post the actual free writing piece, you know, written down so you guys can read it if you, whenever you want, share it, like it um, on my website at sponsor.com forward slash free writing. This is the post that was posted on December 12th, 2016. And it's entitled, How Do You Learn to Love Yourself? Remember, I told you guys it's kind of like having to do with appreciation. And that's a type of thing that I mentioned earlier in the episode when we were speaking about the alchemist. And I put in parentheses there, um, if you're if you check it out on the website, um, that I had this thought while listening to Drew Carey, of all people, on the on a DTFH podcast episode. DTFH is uh, Duncan Trussell Family Hour uh, podcast episode. And if you click on that red writing there, it's actually a link. And it'll link you to that episode in case you guys want to check it out, which I recommend. It's actually going to be one of the uh, podcasts of the week that I recommend in the Midday Monday Boost Letter. And it's um, there's something really dope that uh drew carey mentioned like towards the end of the episode i'm gonna slightly butcher it um i'll explain it better in the in the actual uh midday monday boost letter when i when i um feature this episode but it has something to do with making your own vision board and on that but like it's a a physical board and you put the stuff that you want on it. it's kind of like you know like like a visualization exercise type of thing and he says that if you don't do that for yourself, that it's being done for you in the sense of advertising, the sense of commercials, in the sense of uh, billboards and, and magazine ads and stuff like that. Um, it's technically getting done to you. And I never thought of it that way. It was a pretty interesting concept. Um, but yeah, he, he explains it much better in the episode. Anyway, if you want to hear the full episode, feel free to check it out. I'll link to it in the episode notes, actually. Um, if that's easy for you guys, if you guys don't want to go onto the website, but if you do, uh, it's there for you as well. And the point is that while listening to that episode where they were speaking about this type of thing, um, I had this thought and here it is. I've had this question in the past and still do from time to time for anyone else who has had or ever will have it. This is for you. How do you learn to love yourself? In an attempt to scrub off the implicit negative film of self-help and woo-woo, I'll jump right into the practical, relatable aspects of my point. Substitute the mysticism with work. You have to work at it. That's what it is. Constantly and consistently. In the way that having the physical body you've always wanted is a lifestyle, so is loving yourself. Like making a relationship flourish requires presence, attention, and affection. Like writing a novel means showing up early mornings and late nights and putting in the work. The way that achieving any goal you set for yourself is more about the journey than it is about the destination. So is loving yourself. Loving yourself shouldn't be looked at as some mental state you eventually achieve and keep. It's not something you find, it's something you create by being grateful for what you do have. Be thankful for the ability to strive for what you want. You may not be good at this, but you are at that, and that's not nothing. If you haven't considered it, do so now. From being able to see and read this, albeit not the greatest piece of writing on earth, but being able to see and read anything at all. The ability to think, to contemplate, to learn, to grow. Be thankful for all of it. The way that meditation is more about noticing when your mind inevitably drifts away in thought and you simply bring your attention back to your breath once you realize it. Once you notice that you're hating something about yourself 
bring it back to thoughtful appreciation and the ability to learn. At the very least, and in the long run, you give yourself the option of looking back on a lovely journey. And I wrote that on Friday, December 2nd, 2016 at 9.23 a.m. on the train. Um, yeah, you know, like, I just had that thought and, and it, I don't know, it came to me like in that like kind of like practical sense, like it's something you work towards. And I like the part from this, of liking it to meditation, because meditation to me before was like a, you know, like a woo woo metaphysical type of thing that monks do in Tibet. You know what I mean? But it's not. It's something so much more, more practical, like looked into it, read about it, learned about it from different podcasts I listened to and people that, you know, have been practicing it for for years, like guys like, for example, Jerry Seinfeld, um, Howard Stern, they've been doing TM, uh, Transcendental Meditation for 20, 30, 40 years. Um, And it's something, you know, guys like Tim Ferriss and Rogan and and Duncan Trussell and like all these people it's it, and you know then actually trying it and practicing and um using like the headspace app the calm app um which has like awesome guided meditations for you know 10 15 20 minute sessions and they walk you through it it teaches you that it's not it's not like some mind state that you have to like get into and when you get into it after hours and years of practice and trying that you know you like achieve it or something like that it's not it's like literally focusing on your breath or whatever it is that you choose to focus on like sometimes like you have like a mantra like you could say om or like whatever right but i choose to just focus on, on your breath without like all the extra shit and you take deep breaths in and out and you your eyes are closed and you're just thinking and listening and feeling your breath go in and out in and out and inevitably your mind just like mine just like anybody else's is going to start wandering you're going to start thinking about shit like oh shit i gotta go to work and oh that was a good movie yesterday and oh i wonder how this person is doing and damn i gotta call that person and oh shit did i remember to etc 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 your mind's gonna start racing like it normally does the point of the meditation is to notice that and become mindful of that and by becoming mindful of that it's not like some esoteric type of idea or thing it's literally noticing like oh shit i'm supposed to be meditating come back and start breathing again and focus on the breath and so forth in and out in and out and focus on the breath and then your mind is going to start drifting again and then once you notice it again just bring it back that's all it is that process of noticing and be mindful of your mind, you know, uh, drifting away and then bringing it back. That's what the meditation is. Like, that's where the benefit is by doing that, by noticing and bringing it back, noticing and bringing it back. So in that way, it's, I liken that to loving yourself. Like whenever you're like, pissed at yourself, like, oh, I fucked up this. I could have done that better. I could be better at this. Be mindful of that. Instead of being pissed about it, understand it and appreciate it for what it is and become work on getting better at it instead of being upset about it and that is it folks let me know what you think about that and again you can find that piece uh which is posted onto the site on december 12 2016 at sponsor.com forward slash free writing and it's titled how do you learn to love yourself and that's the episode folks if you guys want to stick around for a few more minutes listen to some background music while i let you know how you can support the podcast in a myriad of ways please stick around if not then uh, don't worry about it and uh, i'll catch you next time so if you would like to support the podcast there's a bunch of different ways that you can do so uh, both uh, financially and non-financially One way that's not financially, does not cost you anything, that you can support the podcast and it's actually a benefit to you 
to do so is to sign up to the midday monday boost letter it's my weekly newsletter where i send out like i mentioned earlier a podcast of the week i also send out four other things on that email every monday at noon when you're at work and you're like fuck this day's boring i'm at fucking work and it's only monday it's friday here yet you'll hear a you got mail if you still have AOL and it'll be the midday monday boost letter to give you a boost on monday midday while you're at work and pissed off and bored and you'll be able to look at a podcast of the week or listen to a podcast of the week with links included in the email you can just click on it on i'll give you the itunes link and the stitcher link and um a little description of you know why this is the podcast that i chose for the podcast of the week and what i liked about it you know a sentence or two to give you an idea of what it is so you're not going into it blind wouldn't do that to you and um uh you can check it out i listen to a lot of different types of podcasts from uh, writing podcasts to comedy podcasts to the uh, fucking fantasy football podcast to philosophy podcast political podcast ah fuck shitload of podcasts hip-hop podcasts i'm just gonna rattle off a few a few different ones so you guys can see the eclecticness of the type of stuff that you can expect uh brain stuff planet money actual innocence ted radio hour about last night Fitz Dog Radio, Talk Nerdy to Me with Kara Santa Maria, Excuse My Ad Lib, Radio Lab, Bad for Business with Jerry Ferrara, You're Welcome with Chael Sun and the Joe Rogan Experience, Irish If You're Skeptic Tank, The I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast, Worldwide Phenomenon, uh, Duncan Taoist, the, the, the Drunken Taoist Podcast, The Creative Pen Podcast, The Story Group Podcast, TYT, the Young Turks, Star Talk Radio, etc., etc., Adam Carolla, What the Fuck with Mark Marin, etc., etc., The Fighter and the Kid, This American Life, The Nerdist, Stuff You Should Know, and goes on and on and on and on and on. I listen to a lot of podcasts. So, within that realm, use me as your filter. Just sign up to the Midday Monday newsletter, and I will be your filter for a bunch of dope different podcasts. Maybe you don't want to go out fishing for them and learning and, and what podcasts are good, this, that, or the other. Don't worry about all that shit. I'll do the work for you. Sign up to the Midday Monday Boost Letter at spuntray.com forward slash subscribe. And I'll let you know once a week on Mondays what is the dopest podcast of the week that you should be listening to that I enjoyed. And the other four things that are on that newsletter are a photo of the week because I like photography. So it's usually like a photo a photo from Instagram from a photographer that posted it that I liked and I'll feature them on the Midday Monday newsletter. And as well as a video of the week, a word of the week and a quote of the week. So check it out again at sponsor.com forward slash subscribe. Another way you can support the podcast and put yourself out there if you want to promote anything via the podcast for free is checking out my questionnaire at spuntoday.com forward slash questionnaire if you're a writer or a creative of some sort you can answer the five questions on my five open-ended questions on my questionnaire and i'll give you i'll read your responses and um give you a shout out on the podcast so check that out at spuntoday.com forward slash questionnaire if you're into photography at all, I've got a bunch of pictures uh, that I take and deem worthy to label photography, quote unquote, at sponte.com forward slash photography. You have cool shit from like my recent trip to Mexico when I went to Chichen Itza. Um, those are like the latest ones that are on there. And uh, they're mainly like landscape type photography um, that I'm into. So check that out at uh, sponte.com forward slash photography forward slash photography you can download any of them from the site completely free use them as like wallpapers or get them printed out or whatever you want they're yours my gift to you uh what else what else what else uh, another way this is actually a way we're transitioning from all the free shit to uh more uh, financial financial based monetary shit 
so if you want to support the podcast financially and this is actually a way you can do so by not actually having to waste any money whatsoever um you can just use my affiliate links uh located at spontane.com forward slash affiliate links what's an affiliate link well an affiliate link is a awesome way where you can do like internet shopping like you normally do like if you shop on amazon.com or on itunes and stores like that you can instead of just going to amazon.com go to sponsorate.com and click on affiliate links and then click on the amazon banner and it'll take you to amazon's website so just for doing those two or three extra clicks you uh amazon will give me a percentage of whatever it is that you buy at your regular price that you would normally buy for anyway uh, just for driving traffic to their website so go to sponsor.com forward slash affiliate links click on the amazon banner and do your shopping like you normally do and i'll just get credit for it basically so that's way you can help support the sponsor podcast uh, financially help uh, keep it afloat here and um it would be appreciated you can also support by buying my fucking book, fucking flipping, flipping book, my fucking book. I have a book called Make Way for You. Uh, it's available in e-back, e-back, e-book format, either on iBooks, on Kindle, on Kobo, on wherever you read your e-books, you can find it. Uh, it's also available in paperback form. Um, if you go to sponsor.com forward slash books, um, all the links and, and, um, resources are there. You have a description of what the book is about. It's, it's, um, subtitled tips for getting out of your own way. And it's pretty much a collection of, of freely written thoughts that have a through line of motivation and inspiration that actually inspired me to put the book together in the first place. And hopefully, um, It'll have that same type of effect on you if you feel like you're stuck in a rut or something like that and need a, a kick in the ass and a, a bit of motivation to to get you get you on your way um at sponsor.com forward slash books you'll also find uh, a few audio excerpts that you can literally just click on there on the site and it's me reading it to you um so you can get an idea of what the what the book is about the type of stuff that you're going to find in it and if you actually want a free copy of the book, I'll even hook you up with that. It's uh, not going to be an ebook format um, if you opt in for the free copy, but it's going to be a PDF and it's the complete full book. It's not like an abridged version or anything like that. Um, and you can do so by just going to spuntoday.com forward slash books, drop in your email address at the bottom of that page, and I'll shoot you over a PDF copy of Make Way For You. All right, then the last way that you can support the podcast financially is by checking out my Patreon page at p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com forward slash spun today. That's patreon dot com forward slash spun today. Now you can become a patron of the Spun Today podcast. And what that means is that it gives you the option to donate a dollar or have it like in four different tiers, a dollar per episode, $3 per episode, $5 per episode, or $8 per episode. And each tier that you choose to donate through um, gets you something. So for example, if you donate a dollar per episode, which I do two episodes a month, so it'll be $2 a month, which will literally be $24 a year uh, to support the uh, Spun Today podcast, which you can, by the way, opt out at any time um, if you choose to, uh, you get a shout out on the podcast. Um, also, I think the next tier, if I'm not mistaken, you get a shout out and you get a a limited edition Spun Today bookmark sent to you as well. Then the next year after that, you get a copy of any and all of my nonfiction books as I publish them, uh, which will uh, go to you. Plus, obviously, a shout out on the podcast and a bookmark, etc. And everything builds on itself. So check that out if you're interested. Again, it's patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com forward slash spun today. And I'd appreciate it. 
aside from that follow me on social media at spun today on twitter at spun today on instagram uh check out the facebook fan page facebook.com forward slash spun today and like it uh subscribe to the youtube page and i gotta do more with youtube i don't do enough with it you do pretty much with youtube all i do is the all of these all of these things all of the uh the podcasts are also available on youtube if that's how you choose to listen to podcasts i know a lot of people do actually listen to podcasts via youtube while they're at work and like shit like that so if that's your thing knock yourself out but i want to want to give like some more like value to the youtube page but i don't really do too much visual we take pictures of stuff and stuff like that but anyway um check that out and that's pretty much it guys folks ladies gentlemen uh thank you very much for listening to this episode episode 62 free writing session of the spun today podcast and as always substitute the mysticism with hard work and start taking steps in the general direction of your dreams thanks for listening (laughs) 